So welcome back. And today we are going to see, the, or you can see, the topic of today's lecture is cell membrane and membrane transport. So in previous lecture, we already studied about the prokaryote and eukaryote cell, and at their study material, or when we are studying these eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells, what we learned a very special structural unit of the cell that is cell membrane. So in this following lecture, what we have to see that what is the cell membrane and what are the major key functions that are performed by the cell membrane, their properties, their structure, and the very important, their transportation. So the transportation process is all that is the key function process done by the cell membrane inside a cell. So in this lecture, we have to see what a structure this cell membrane follow and how this structure basically help the cell membrane to pass the following uh, material across the membrane. So uh, these all things will be summarized in the membrane transport portion. So uh, if we go through the introduction part and overview part of this plant and cell membrane process, so now we will see here what are the functions. So basically, if we see a brief overview of how the cell membrane work or function, so first and very important, separate cell from the environment. So basically, this make a core a covering to the cell that separate out it from the outer environment. Second one here is transport substance in and out of the cell. That's what the very fundamental work of the cell membrane which do, the transportation. Transportation from outside to inside, inside to outside. If they need anything inside the cell, they just absorb it. But if they do not need anything and if they are producing some excretory material, so they just excrete it through the cell membrane. Receive and respond to stimuli. So basically it is the outer uh, membrane. It works like our skin. So as our skin basically receives any kind of stimuli and our brain responds to that. So that's the same function this cell membrane works. That they are receiving any external stimuli, just kind of signal. Okay, any signal, they just pass on that signal inside the cell cytoplasm and they work on the response pattern from the cytoplasm. So, whatever the, uh, you know, whatever the signal, whatever the instruction they are getting from inside the cell, we just pass on to the outside the cell. Now, if we talk about their properties, like what are the properties of the cell membrane? They can be the hydrophobic and hydrophilic. As the name suggests, hydrophobic. Phobia is like something which you will not want. Okay, and hydro is like the water. Hydro meaning is water. So if they are not the water loving molecule, so they are also word as when they do not absorb water. And the second thing, hydrophilic. In that case, they suddenly start loving the water. So whenever they need the water, they become hydrophilic. And if they do not need the water, they can be the hydrophilic. Selectively permeable. This is a very key property of that plasma membrane or cell membrane process because they are selectively permeable means they only allow the certain amount of thing or certain type of molecule which are required inside the cell. If anything which come onto the surface or the cell membrane and if that thing can be harmful or any type of poison or maybe also if cell do not want that, either they are good or bad, if cell do not want that particular enzyme or anything which is present outside, then the selectively permeable quality of the cell membrane do not allow that thing to become inside the cell. So that's why this property is very important. It's the structure. So there will be two structures we are going to study in the cell membrane. First and very famous one, fluid mosaic model. And second is lipid bilayer. 
So in that case, lipid bilayer formation of the cell membrane, where we are having three composition of uh, the lipid bilayer. First is the phospholipid, that is the 75% is made up of the phospholipids, 20% by the cholesterol and 5% by the glycolipids. So basically, these all are the lipids, der uh, derived lipids basically. So the phospholipid which having the phosphate and lipid composition, cholesterol, that is the steroid, and the glycolipid, basically the glycogen and lipid composition. So this is the main key components which are present inside the lipid bilayer. Next we will see the structure of plasma. How it look? You can see the diagram. So this you can see here the very outer layer. And there are some bifurcations here and the middle layer and the, this is the inner portion. So this is, uh, you know, this uh, not look simple, but it is not that complicated for the understanding process. Like this are the protein channels which present inside the cell, integral protein. Basically, these protein regulate the inner and outer, okay? Whatever it will have to be come inside and whatever it will have to be go outside. These are the globular proteins, glycoproteins, carbohydrates. These cholesterol, glycolipids, these are the basic component which present throughout the cell membrane. In this slide, you just see that what are the basic key component that make cell or plasma membrane here. We will study them one by one. Like the glycoprotein, why the glycoproteins are present here, why the protein channels are there, what are the function of cholesterol here, like the surface protein, what they do. Alpha helix protein structure, what is they are doing here, like this alpha helix, alpha structure of protein. If you study the structure of protein, like uh, you will be studying it later, and then you will be known as the protein have a four kind of structure. So basically, the alpha helical structure of protein, this is very common inside the plasma. So we have to see all the characters. And we have to go through all the key components of the plasma membrane one by one. This is as a fluid mosaic model look like. You can also so, uh, see these channels actually, the green dark one. Okay, they are the major mediating uh, role models. They basically select everything, whatever go outside, whatever come inside. They are like gates, a very intelligent gates. It, uh, they are like, uh, if the things is required, these come. If, if you are not required, just go out. So basically, these are the all the things which are derived, something, some kind of diffusion, osmosis. So these all transporting majors have been worked under the fluid mosaic. Model. We will discuss it also. Now, first, we are, uh, what uh, we theoretically we see what is a lipid barrier in the case of the cell membrane structure. Now you can see here the diagram of arrangement is amphipathetic lipid molecule to form a lipid layer. Amphipathetic. I already told you in a second or third slide that they are having both the kind of the structure in the cell membrane. Like they can be the hydrophobic and they can be the hydrophilic. If any structure, in any scientific structure, okay, if anything having these both the qualities. Like they are having this water living capacity, they are uh, having this water repellent capacity. So if they are having the both two character in a one unit, we always call them the amphipathetic. Okay, this uh, prefix amphi that is basically used when the two character present in one unit. So that's why this amphipathetic lipid molecule is present here to form this lipid barrier. The yellow polar head group separate the gray hydrophobic tail from the aqueous cystosolic and extracellular. Now, the polar groups. So, polar groups are which are the hydrophilic. Okay. The thing which can be summarized into the water that can be named them as the polar groups. So, basically, here, polar groups, they separate the gray hydrophobic tails. Okay. If, uh, I show you the diagram. 
okay, we will understand it by that. Okay, I will. If you wanted uh, to go through the theory, I will read it out for you. But I think the diagram is a little more appropriate as compared to the theory. So these, okay, this is a cell, and this is the extracellular fluid that present outside the cell. This is nucleus, and this is the cytoplasm. This is a very simple kind of cell diagram. Here. Now, in the second diagram, you can see here the cell one. Okay, and these the yellow one. Okay, uh, we are talking about this yellow zone, for which perform the water filling thing and avoid the waterphobic reaction, waterphobic elements. So here you can see this uh, go through one by one. The first and very blue dots of the above surface that are the carbs. Okay, carbohydrates present on the outer surface. Second after that, the glycoproteins. These are a little broader one in a blue. Globular protein, protein channels. These are the, the uh, elongated blue one. These are the protein channels. Green one. These are the glycolipids. Surface protein. This uh, the last one. That basically present to the internal structure to the cell. That is the uh, Surface protein, globular protein. This again, globular protein, which uh, having a uh, work for as a, you know, transformation agent. Filament or cytoskeleton. This. These are the basic. You can say these are the uh, these uh, electron chain. A full electron chain basically govern all the membrane transportation. So in the phospholipid layer, we are having. This phospholipid, the outside, the uh, carbohydrate, and the middle yellow region is this middle like, yellow region is basically significantly indicating towards the phospholipids. So all the phospholipids, if they are present in the middle section and the glycoproteins and carbs on the other surface, so this is called as a phospholipid by layer. So basically, they are having two layers here. Okay, phospholipids, they are having two layers, one towards the outer side, and second is towards the inner side. So these outer and inner side of layer. That's why we call them the phospholipid by layer. Now we will see what are the their function here. Lipid by layer from through the process of cell assembly, the cell membrane consists primarily of thin layer of amphipathetic phospholipid. So firstly, a bilayer. That is uh, this lipid bilayer firstly initiated with a thin layer of the amphipathetic phospholipid. So these amphipathetic phospholipid they are very necessary for which they actually can you know uh, they are not biased for just one one single thing. Like if they are hydrophilic, they just go for the constituent on the having the hydrogen bond inside. But if they are amphiphilic, they can be. Uh, openly available for both the cells. It either can be hydrophobic and hydrophilic. So that is spontaneously arranged so that the hydrophobic tail region are isolated from the surrounding water, while the hydrophilic head region interact with the intracellular cytosolic and extracellular size uh, size of the resulting bilayer. Now what happened? This hydrophilic head. Okay, this is a hydro. Uh, you know, antipathetic chain. So when we are having this hydrophilic head, that head is basically having the two poles. One pole or one region in the intracellular that is the cytosol. Inside the cytosol, one head gone through the intracellular cytostolic region, and another hand is basically present inside the lipid layer. So that's why they can easily exchange things from one to another. While another tail, the hydrophobic tail region are isolated from the surrounding water. Water, so basically they are a little isolated from the other near cell portion. They are just present towards the outer region. In that case, the hydrophobic interaction they are also called as hydrophobic effect because they are not uh, involving any kind of water absorption reactions. So they are the major driving forces in the formation of the lipid bilayer. But they have a very key role to play here to form the lipid bilayer. So now we will later if we see the function of the membrane protein. 
now everything will be studied here. So now we will have to see every function of these membrane proteins. So these first are very important, the ion channels. So basically what is the major function of ion channels? They allow fluid to ion in and out of the cell. So these are the, on the basis of their ionic forces, they allow the ions to can be, uh, come inside and go outside the cell. Carriers, they are selectively more polar substances across the membrane. So they are the transporter here, they carry things and move polar substances across the membrane. So that's why they are transporter. Receptor, they basically receive something. When, you know, we are we in a starting phase, what we studied, they catch the signals. Uh, uh, this membrane have a tendency to catch the signal. So basically at that time, these signals are received at the cell membrane by the receptors. Next one is linkers. They help anchor cell together by bonding uh, protein or filament together. So linkers, like uh, this cell membrane, we, as we see the model of the cell membrane, there are several layers. So these layers have to be bound together. They cannot be discarded like one, two, three. They have to be binded in a one particular manner. At that time, these linkers help this membrane to be a one single unit. Next here, cell identity marker, so mainly glycoprotein and glycoprotein. So basically they mark the identity, whatever the things that is come at the door or cell membrane door. So these glycoproteins and glycolipids have a greater tendency to whatever the thing have to be accepted and whatever thing do not have to be internalized. So that's why you can see there are the glycoproteins, they are present at the gate, okay. They only let the thing which can have the tendency to come inside the cell membrane. So integral protein, they are present at this position, globular protein. They basically present here for the receptors. So whatever the receptor which will receive a signal here and come down, so there will be something here to receive them, to get them inside the cell. So at that time, this integral protein work that globular protein and the integral protein is there. These are protein which basically make a gate. Okay, this uh, uh, whole protein unit, this is making the opening of the gate. So you can see the protein on the uh, both the sides. Okay, both the sides protein have a very major role to play for the receptors, for the linkers, all the things you can say that are mainly governed by the protein. Now we will see the membrane permeability. So like what for what things membrane is a permeable unit. Selectively membrane, so only some substance can pass through cross membrane. So like whatever the things which can be permeable and what are the things which cannot be permeable inside the membrane. So permeable things are like non-polar, uncharged molecule like oxygen, carbon dioxide and sterile. These are the things which are permeable inside the cell membrane. Now, what are the things which are non-permeable inside the cell membrane? These are the ions, the large polar molecule. And these things basically can cause some damage inside the cell membrane. That's why they are not permeable. And uh, this cell membrane, basically uh, they are prohibited every large polar molecule or every large non-polar so whatever the thing which have a little bigger size in the cell membrane core of the glycoprotein, they cannot let that thing inside the cell. Slightly permeable, small uncharged polar uh, molecule. Maybe sometime if the molecule is very small and that is uncharged but polar, that can also come inside the membrane. But it have to be very smaller in size. So that, uh, for example, we can see here water and urea. They can both do the job if they are smaller in size. Next, we will see how the membrane transport happens or what other major type of membrane transport happen inside the cell membrane. 
So very first, the passive transport means does not require any kind of energy. So basically, when we divide this membrane transport, passive transport and active transport, we divide them on the basis if they need energy or if they do not need any kind of energy to pass. So in the passive transport, they do not need any kind of energy to pass or take in the substances. In active transport, they use this energy to get substance across the membrane. So basically, when they wanted something to be inside, what they need, they need a major amount of the energy. So this passive transport substance moved down on the concentration and electrical gain. Now we have a question here. Like if the passive transport, if they do not require any energy, so on what basis they across or they pass the substance from one side to another side. So here the thing which come for as a result or as a solution, like the concentration and electrical gradient. So basically concentration gradient is very you know effective. Sometimes always osmosis diffusion. They all the concentration based uh, transport. Like if the concentration is high at some place and in another place, if the concentration is low, then always there are movement through the higher concentration to the lower concentration. That is happen in a very simple kind of the transportation. Now here move from high concentration to lower concentration. They can pass through one area to another. Now, if the uh, that is also called as Brownian movement or Brownian motion, this passive transport. The another name is Brownian motion. Now, if we are talking about the active transport here, they move against the concentration gradient. Means, suppose if there are quantity of something is very high from one end, but still. We don't want that high quantity can come inside the cell. At that time, when the inner portion goes to outer, or uh, you can say the opposed the concentration gradient. And this process, whenever we, uh, you know, this is very common. If you wanted to to do something rebel, okay, if you wanted to go against the law, so what we have to do? We have to need a more energy, a more resources. So the same thing happens here. If they needed to go to the along uh, against to the concentration, they need the a high level of the energy here. In this process, there will be two things or two subcategories: endocytosis and exocytosis. So these endocytosis and exocytosis, the use of vehicles, uh, vesicles to transport substance in or out the cell. In this process. We uh, take the help of the Golgi platers. They have this facility of the vesicles. They basically help us, help the cell membrane to transport that particular thing from in or out the cell. Now, the very first type of membrane transport, diffusion, if we take in here, set the movement of substance down a concentration gradient. So, stiffness of the concentration gradient temperature, mass of diffusing substance, surface of area diffusing across and diffusion distance. These all things play a major role when we are talking about a membrane transport through the diffusion process. So here we are talking about the diffusion process. So what we mean is stiffness of the concentration gradient. We need a high concentration gradient if we wanted to out that the cell have a higher concentration of the substance but if we wanted something to let in then the concentration should be higher than the outside temperature should not be very much and temperature should be maintained according to every constituent or every uh, thing which we have to be transported they have their actual temperature and that temperature have to be maintained throughout the process mass of diffusing substance that is also very important if the mass is small okay so maybe that thing cannot diffuse masses should be very less 
so that the force just let them inside or outside the cell so the mass is very important unit that uh, play a very important role surface area diffusing across so surface area that also plays important role if the surface area is large there will be the difficulty in diffusion but if the surface area is less then there will be a more efficient diffusion can take place also the diffusion distance like the diffusion distance means uh, at what distance that particular thing have to be diffused that is also plays a very important role inside the diffusion process now i think you all uh, got like how the diffusion is taking place or how these several majors help the diffusion process to do the membrane transfer now the membrane transport here membrane transport and in that we have to see like we studied the diffusion process but now we have been two type of diffusion here first is very simple diffusion and second one is here the facilitated diffusion so the simple diffusion basically the substance moves freely across the sample membrane importance of waste and gas issue so as this process the simple diffusion there are no boundage of anything the substance easily move freely across the cell membrane at that kind of diffusion is called a simple diffusion in which these things can be involved like the non polar hydrophobic small uncharged polar oxygen carbon dioxide nitrogen gases fatty acids steroids fat soluble vitamins a huge number which can be diffused throughout the simple diffusion process now we will see what need in the facilitative type facilitative type of diffusion so in this using a membrane protein to hitch a ride across the membrane so basically now what we need in the facilitative type of diffusion we need a protein so now we need a protein that can basically give a push across the membrane so at that time like if the something we already studied the something come under the non permeable membrane hedges so at that time if the thing is polar or highly charged it cannot get through along with the normal transportation majors at that time these things need some extra uh, energy or extra support or extra thing which make them across the cell membrane so now in facilitative diffusion like we are uh, having the these non permeable things here two polar and highly charged so basically a protein hitch needed to pass them across the membrane so these are the basic type of the diffusion so you can see it by diagram also a small non polar molecules in the extracellular fluid this is the bit by layer plasma membrane And this is the cytoplasm. So you can see here, non-polar molecule. They are going inside easy. We don't need anything. What just we need a higher concentration to the outside and a lower concentration to the inner side. So easily on the basis of higher to lower concentration and the type of the molecule, they can easily diffuse through the simple diffusion. but and the type of facilitative diffusion you can see here these are the channel mediated moves okay now what we need a protein cell a protein hedge by which when the protein acted or especially go there and recept that molecule okay now protein have to be a host and they have to go under gates and may basically they have to invite that particular extracellular Uh, polar things or ion things inside the cell then only the gates will be open and they can come under the following cell but this all process they really need a signal from inside the cell if cell anyhow don't want that particular thing to come inside then these protein will be no become any host for the outer substance so these protein also just uh, you know work on the 
internal guidance, not from the outer one. So basically, these channel mediated moves down concentration gradient through a channel protein. So this is called the ion channels. When the ions are coming through it, it can be called the ion channels because they basically channel channeling beam from the outside to inner side. Type of facultative diffusion also, some the ion channel mediated, other one is carrier mediated. Now, in this uh, situation, we need a carrier protein. Okay, in that situation, we need a ion thing or we need a protein that basically work on the ion concentration here. But in the carrier mediated one, we also need a carrier proteins which carry our things. But in this case, we are uh, seeing here the glucose, fructose, and some vitamins. Okay, these things have to be go inside the cell membrane. Here, no ions will be work in the carrier mediated. Only ions will be diffused through the ion channels. And if we are using the carrier mediated transportation pattern, then we need that is to be a specific molecule based material. Now you can see here the membrane transport osmosis. Okay, osmosis that is a special type of passive diffusion. What happened in this case? Water moves from high to low concentration. So low solute to high solute concentration. Now this can uh, be easily understandable that water always means solvent. If the thing in what happened in the case of osmosis, solvent always uh, you know flow to the higher to the lower concentration and low solute to the high solute concentration. So this is very, you know, understand. I think osmosis, all the people you know osmosis. So this process also happened for the transportation inside the cell membrane. Now here, you can see water can move in two different ways. How they can be uh, move uh, in or out in two different ways. First, by the between lipid molecules so lipid are some having the hydrophilic molecules or hydrophilic tails in them so through those uh, hydrophilic chain they can be come inside second one is here through the aquaporine channels okay these are the integral protein and as the name suggests they are aquaporine basically a special type of pore which are designed for the water so water can move even through the hydrophilic tail of the lipid bilayer or they can be passed through the echoporine channel which is a basically integrated protein. Water moves until equilibrium reached on the both the side of membrane and at what uh, concentration and what optimum level the water can move in or out only till then, then when the both the situation are in equilibrium means the total amount of the water uh, inside the cell and outside the cell will be balanced till then the water can be moved. After having an equilibrium situation, both from the outside and inside, they cannot move in and out. So uses hydrostatic and osmotic pressure to design that or you can osmotic pressure basically indicate that now you have to spot, uh, stop your transportation process. Membrane transport osmosis uh, also involves the solution toxicity. Means the ability to change volume of cell by changing water content. This is called the solution toxicity. Means how much amount of the solution is having inside a cell. So basically the uh, volume of a particular cell can be changed by adding up or removing the water from the cell. So basically there are the three points you can see here, isotonic, hypotonic and hypotonic. These are the three conditions which can be reliable on the solution toxicity. With the very first here you can see isotonic situation. So in this what happened, same amount of water on both the side of membrane, if the quantity of water outside the cell or inside the cell if they're having a accurate number means neither more or less they call be as isotonic if hypotonic situation more water and less solute means the situation here inside the cell isotonic 
so uh, basically solute concentration is lower and water is in, in the high concentration in the isotonic both the water is same amount on both the side of membrane and also the solute concentration is equal okay there is no difference between the solute and water concentration in hypertonic more water less solute in hypertonic there is less water and more solute so if a cell is facing the hypertonic situation it will be very understandable that they are having very more solute and having very less water if they are having the hypertonic they are having more water and less solute and isotonic have to be good in situation the all the things are in a balanced version so this is the solution toxicity now you can see it by diagram hypertonic situation you can see the uh, you know solute particle is very high and water is very low here h2 basically removed out and solute concentration here isotonic situation hydrogen or oh, sorry water can become water can be good because they all the balance here in hypertonic situation the water is more all the water is inside and the solute is less also in the case of uh, membrane transport how the these uh, hypertonic isotonic and hypertonic situation also got these kind of cell Uh, situation like if the hypertonic situation cell can be called as a plasmolysis okay if the cell is having the plasmolysis situation means the cell water is going outside flaccid condition flaccid is a good kind of uh, osmotic pressure in the both the things are equally balanced turgid turgid means when the water is applying the pressure on the wall okay if the water is applying pressure on the wall at that time that pressure is called the turgid pressure active transport here if we talk about the active transport so movement of molecule across membrane against concentration gradient require energy if we want it to be transported it, but it should be against the gradient uh, against the concentration gradient that will require energy now what are the sources of energy which provide here to move or to happen the membrane transport the very first is the hydrolysis of atp then that can give energy energy stored in ionic concentration gradient second reactor transport so basically there are the two main sources of the energy by which we can do the active transport process first one is we can do the hydrolysis process of atp okay and second one is we can take the energy from that is basically stored in ionic concentration gradient also here you can see ions amino acids monosaccharides they can be a very fuel member for the active transport function energy from atp change shape of the carrier proteins and use 40% of your atp for this okay so sometimes what happen when the atp can be taken from a carrier protein then at that time these carrier proteins basically change their shape and at that time when the carrier proteins are changing their shape due to releasing the 40% of your atp they work as a pumps and sodium potassium pump are the basic thing you can say they are the basic thing which uh, you know mobilize that whole uh, primary active transport all you can say this primary active transport is just basically depend on the carrier protein pump and sodium potassium pump we will discuss them in the next lectures now also if we talk about like this active transport primary active transport what they need they need sodium sodium potassium pump but in the case of the second reactive transport they need co transporters so what are the co transporters so we will see here the uses energy stored in sodium or hydrogen gradient used to drive another substance across the membrane membrane so if they wanted to something uh, to across the membrane to cross the membrane what they need is uh, what they need is energy and at this time or at the secondary active transport time they need a co transport by which the energy gained of nitrogen so sorry sodium and hydrogen
so when carrier protein binds with sodium or hydrogen will bind to another substance and carry across the membrane so this carrier proteins basically have to bind with the sodium or hydrogen to basically cross the particular thing from the cell membrane so this binding uh, process so you can say that's why we are calling them the co-transport they need a transportation with a co-passenger they cannot do it uh, their own so that's why this is very important process that uses a proton gradient and without this proton gradient they cannot work efficiently and they cannot transport the thing across the membrane this is the last uh, sometimes about the bulk transportation so membrane transport when we are doing a little more bulky things to transport a big molecules to transport from one another places so here you can see the endocytosis in this process bringing material into the cell second terms phagocytosis solid material we are bringing inside the terms pinocytosis non specific fluids okay when the fluid material coming inside the cell at that time they are the pinocytosis function receptor mediated they are only happen for the specific material not for all the things exocytosis releasing material from the cell so endocytosis having something inside exocytosis releasing something from the cell phagocytosis solid material even we are taking or releasing pinocytosis all about the liquid thing the septum mediated is for the specific kind of molecules now as our cell membrane process is completed so we have to see uh, are you able to giving the answer of these or question then only this will be confirmed that all the things which i taught you in the previous in the whole lecture that will be understand or not so you have to answer these uh, following questions like this is not the function of plasma membrane so what is the written material which is not the function of plasma membrane plasma membrane carbohydrate so what they work in the plasma membrane glycolipid are usually situated where i already told you the major interaction responsible for stabilizing plasma membrane what interaction do need it in the plasma membrane lipid molecule are arranged in what sort of situations ion carriers are located in where carriers where the iron ion carriers are located in the plasma membrane the best method to study the properties of integral membrane proteins is what are the basic equipment you can use for studying their integral membrane protein in the plant cell the layer is present nearest to the plasma membrane so what layer is present near to the plasma membrane if we talk about the beetroot if kept in cold water anthocyanin does not come out due to plasma membrane why okay because the pigments can be traveled through the uh, plasma membrane so why it is not coming from plasma membrane you have to explain that plasma membrane is made up of what this is the all we studied and i think you get the answer but still if you have any problem and you you wanted to study more there are some differences you can go through and there are very suitable knowledge is present about the cell membrane how cell membrane work what are their structure what are their properties and how they will work for the functionality of any organ in organism okay that's all for the today this next lecture we will see some more cell organelles and how they work